Hello folks, Junkie Rock 13 here. Everything vaping related. Um, it's Junkie Rock 13. My real name is Ross Sanders, and I'm here bringing you a look at the BT801 or the Dream Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer. Um, there are other vendors, or different vendors, I should say, selling this device, and my glasses feel like they're on crooked. Um, so I'm sure the names of this atomizer will be called other things. Uh, this does come from China. Um, I purchased this in a co-op and I've had this device for a while. I have been using it and we're going to take a close-up look and see how I set it up. Now I am not saying that it is the correct way that everyone else sets it up but it is the right way that I set it up. It works for me. That being said, I know there are people out there that make better coils than me, wrap their uh, wicks better than I can, um, they fill their devices differently. Now, you know, I'm not saying that my way is the right way. I'm just saying this way, my way, works for me. And that being said, other people out there that are getting into rebuildable atomizers that don't know how to set it up or have not set it up themselves. Um, I'm just trying to give them an idea of how I do it. Uh, it works for me, so it might work for them, but I'm sure their method uh, will take a little bit from me, a little bit from this guy that showed them, a little bit from this guy that showed them, or they watched the video over here, and they're all going to combine their own methods. And that's what I urge people. Watch a lot of videos. Watch a lot of networks. Watch a lot of people do things. Um, ask questions. You'll get your answers. Um, let's take a close look up at it and talk about it. See what it vapes like. And see what the Dream Rebuildable Atomizer Dripping Atomizer has got in the store for you. Let's get to it. Okay, folks, the Dream Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer close-up. Um, you notice that there is a kind of crisscrossed uh, ring right here. And what that is, is an air control valve to allow you to have a more airier draw or a tighter draw. You'll notice that there are three air holes on the side of this atomizer. And if I bring this all the way down, it closes them up. Now all the way down will be the tightest draw. Wide open or halfway will start op um, making it more airier. All the way open will be an airier draw. Okay? Now, on the bottom, you have a standard 510 connection with a floating positive post pin, which is really nice. Some people um, end up having problems because some, some devices have a post that sticks out further and it pushes it in and then you have to pull your post. Uh, this eliminates that issue. Up top, <clears throat> I just have a 510 knucklehead drip tip. Any 510, not any, I can't say that because some 510 drip tips are heavy run, uh, uh, bigger diameter base and they don't fit in but 510 drip tip up here okay and when I open it up inside okay when I open it up inside you notice that there is kind of an X of four holes on the outside and one in the center okay with two screws and two places for two screws now you can have quad wicks um, dual wicks tri wicks uh, whatever kind of uh, setup you really want to try with this is really open to the user 
The threading on this is pretty nice. There is a little o-ring right here to prevent any leaking. The inside of this, the threading is also nice. The one thing that I did notice is that the air holes are actually drilled right in the threading. Now it doesn't go up that far on the device or the air holes. Okay? Now it doesn't go up that far but the air holes are based right at the bottom of where the um, wicks are going to sit. So the air is going to be coming from under the wicks. And that's actually a nice setup. Um, where the air holes line up when this is screwed on all the way is I lifted come on focus 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 okay I actually lifted those screws up to show you where it is and it actually ends up being right there okay I'm not gonna screw it all the way down I just wanted to show you so it is actually right there so it is at an angle on this side and this is the side right here where I like to do my wick now let's build a wick for it oh let me tell you why I'm building a wick like this because this thing has a chamber no well so you can't fill it up with juice or put extra juice in there and the silica will absorb it up because this is a flat bottom here and you do have a chamber right here that you really can't fill up with juice because of the air holes and juice will fill out, fall out and also you can't fill it up there because the wick the coil will be down in here and if you put too much juice in there you're just gonna flood out the wick so uh, what some vapors have come up with is the hoop uh, method of making a coil now doing that let's just make a little hoop here and when you have your wick set up right there in a hoop method all this space up here is not being used inside this chamber here okay but if you have silica up there getting filled with juice uh, wicking it down into the coil you can put that much more juice in your device okay now there are a couple ways that I have found to make these wicks like this now these are just my method I am sure that there are other people making that much better wicks than me I am not claiming to be the best um, I'm sorry I'm just trying to fix my canthal it, there we go um, I do not claim to be the best wick maker for rebuildable uh, dripping atomizers but I like making them they come out good and they work for me that being said I'm gonna bring this out a little bit okay now I am just going to cut off a piece of canthal now I always make the piece bigger than what I need and it always seems to be sometimes not even enough then okay so what I'm gonna do is just take a piece of I don't know about three inches of silica and I don't know six piece, six inch piece of canthal six inch piece of canthal I'm gonna leave like around two inches hanging off all right start off in the middle or close to the middle and just start wrapping the silica okay let me try to make sure I'm in the center of the screen or the camera okay so I'm gonna start really close to my fingers to make the first wrap here let me just straighten this out one more time okay here we go folks and I'm gonna pinch it down on the canthal or the canthal onto the silica and start wrapping now I'm gonna wrap around four wraps now I'm not gonna make it super tight but I'm gonna make it enough to have enough tension and I'm just gonna keep on moving over as I go so they're not right on top of each other okay now I'm gonna bring the camera in nice and close so you can see this wick okay let's 
see if that'll show up really nice. Okay, does everybody see that good? I hope so. Okay, now you'll notice that they are not properly spaced, so now that's the what I'm going to do right now. Let's just take my fingernail. And just space them out a little bit. Now with silica, they don't have to be perfectly spaced out. But having them pretty close is nice. Now I'm going to come back out. Okay. Now, because it's not a hoop, what I'm going to do is just make a hoop myself. I'm going to cut off another piece of canthal. And what you can do is just make a little hoop up here. Or just put it together like that. And then take a, another little piece of canthal and pick it up and just do a little bread tie effect on there. And then you can take the scissors and just clip them off. Okay, so now you got like a little raindrop effect. Okay, and you have your two leads. And the other way is by taking another piece of silica and unwinding some more cancel. Okay, let me make sure it goes back in the hole or else I'll have a whole spool of canthal on my floor, which would be insane. Okay, so I'm just going to take another piece of canthal. And now this way is a little bit more difficult, but it seems like um, it's a little cleaner. But this way you're actually going to have like a double wick set up, okay? And you're going to wrap your wick or your coil around here. Now the way I do this is I start off by putting it in there through the wick and leaving enough on both sides and starting on one end, if you know what I mean. Starting closer, closer to one uh, fray piece of the silica and pinching it down and because I am going to have to stick it in the hole or in the hoop I should say and start wrapping now this you want to be careful because you don't want to do this and unravel the silica while you're doing this okay but because there are two pieces of silica being wrapped around you're going to be using that much more canthal so I use less wick or less wraps I usually do around three wraps like this to get the ohm setup that I like and I'm usually around 1.5 I'm a low resistant vapor 1.5 to 1.7 Okay. And there we go. Now I will bring that in one more time so you can see that set up. space these out. Okay, make sure none of them are touching. Okay. There you go. Now what I'm going to do is put it on the device. Okay. So I'm going to bring the bottom base back in. And what I'm going to do is I am going to start with the negative side and
and what you really need to do is wrap the canthal all the way around okay don't fight with me the screw okay and do the same for the positive and once you get both of them wrapped around the screw you're gonna take your Phillips head screwdriver and just tighten them down all the way make sure they're nice and tight or close to the wick I should say as possible without the screws touching the wicks on the canthal or on the silica I meant. You don't want to have big leads. Okay, and then pull that one tight and tighten that one up. Okay, now I'm just gonna take these ends and Clip them off right close to the screws and tuck in the rest right around them screws. Okay, now I am going to grab my Proveri because this will test the ohms out. And I just want to make sure it's firing real quick. Let me just make sure that this device is down. Okay, I want to put it down around three six. That'll be good. Turn on the device and fire it real quick. Make sure they are spaced out. I don't want them touching each other. Raise there. Let me just test the ohms out on this. And it came out to be 1.8, uh, 2.0 actually. That's a little bit higher than normal. So I am going to raise the the wattage or the voltage up a little bit to around four volts. And then give it a little burn. See them glowing nice and red and now I'm going to just drop some juice on there okay so I just have a little styling puffer um, very little Long Island iced tea it's kind of one of my juices that I love to drip and I'm just going to put it on the area where the coil is and just look at the vapor production coming off of it Okay, seems to be vaping nice. Then what I like to do is just run some drops of juice right around silica just to get it started off on both sides just so it's nice and wet. Then we're good to go. Putting the top back on and the drip tip and we're ready to vape here we go let's vape it and see what I think about it okay so there you have it the dream rebuildable dripping atomizer setup the close-up of what this looks like now the Phoenix doesn't have a adjustable air valve ring whatever you want to call it um, and there's only two posts, so you can only set it up with a positive and negative. This has a place for four negative screws and one positive, so you can have that quad wick set up. Um, I've set one up one time 
and I really did not like it. Now, I'm, I'm sure other people have set them up and they blow vapor. And I like the way this is set up, the way I have it set up now. Um, I like the little hoop method. Let me just unscrew it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, there it is. Yeah, it's not crackle pop. Okay. Now this is um, a 2 ohm wrap set at 4 volts, okay? I'm just going to throw another 2 drops on there because I was vaping it after I set it up. So you understand why it's a hoop up here so it can store juice up into this section of the device and utilize it. Now when this is totally dried out, I usually get around eight to 10 drops, okay? Um, I'm sure other people can set it up different where they can get 20 drops. Um, like I said before, this is my way and it works for me. I'm sure that other people set it up a lot different and maybe even better and it works for them. Let's show you how it vapes and uh, I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, vapor production is great. This is, I believe, is a 70-30 blend. I'm not 100% sure about Stylin Puffers, Long Island Iced Tea. It might even be a 50-50. But, um, vapor production is great. The air control valve is nice. Now, when it, I, see, I leave it open because that's the way I like it. But the option is there for making it a tighter draw. Let me show you a tighter draw all the way open, or all the way closed, excuse me, what the vapor production looks like on that. Okay, so you can see the vapor production is pretty similar. Okay, and then wide open. Actually, with it wide open, you are going to get more vapor production. But the throat hit and the flavor is great with this little chamber right there. I like it. It's a great little rebuildable atomizer. Um, if you're a dripper and you are tired of buying atomizer after atomizer after atomizer and you want to get into rebuildables, this is an option. I know there's the Phoenix. It's called the Bulldog also. Um, there's also the Igo or Iglo. Um, I have that one also. I'm going to be doing a video on that one. That one's a little bit different design. But this one has the little air control, small chamber. Looks nice on the Proveri. Looks nice on a lot of other different devices. And they're inexpensive. Um, there are a lot of vendors that are, not a lot, but I know there's vendors that are selling these. I know Empire Mods has it. Um, off the top of my head, I, I, I only seen them right now that have it, but I'm sure that other vendors have it. I will put that down in my description. Um, that's all I have to say about this device. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, thank all of you for subscribing. And if you're not subscribed to my videos, please subscribe, not above anymore, down below. Comment on this video whether you like it or you don't like it, or you like this device. If you have one, please comment on it. Um, that's it, folks. I want to remind everybody, Saturday nights between 8 and 10 o'clock on Elixir TV, I do a show called Gratefully Dedicated Vaping. Um, listen to Grateful Dead music. Talk about rebuildables, any vaping uh, questions that might came up, come up, 
and we have a good time. We laugh. Um, you know, it's just friends hanging out, and everybody's welcome. So I will see you there, and until next time, take care and keep vaping, everybody.